Hey, Dan Cuchamillo here from NorCal Sports Network with another video. This video is on the LA Dodgers and who I think they may sign in free agency. And I'll just tell you, I think they get a get a haul this off season here. And before we get into this video, I want to thank our sponsor, Chapman Law Group. They're in Marin in the Bay Area. Give Chapman Law Group a call. They service all of California. Chapman Law Group, they are. You can find them in the description of this video. All right, guys, let's get started with this. Who I think the Dodgers sign and why. And again, this is going to be a crapshoot because when it really comes down to it, none of us know exactly where any of these guys are really going to sign, not even the executives, the so-called experts, you know, the Jim Bowdens of the world, the Bob Nightingales, the Jeff Passons, all of, the, all of us are guessing. Some of us probably have a little bit more insight. Some of these guys do, but most of us, we're just kind of what we're hearing and picking up and what we feel. So I'm going to give you my best crack at this. And here we go. All right. Let me just point out that I think the first guy they sign is uh, from Japan, but it may not be the first guy because he's not signing until after January 15th. OK, that pretty much is a given. And that's um, Roki Sasaki. Roki is not going to sign until after he's posted for January 15th because the Japanese club that owns his rights will make more money with the posting fees and Roki will be able to negotiate a little bit higher with international pool money being a little bit better. So I think the Dodgers do land Roki Sasaki and he teams up with Shohei and, and uh, Yoshima Yamamoto to form three of the best pitchers in baseball, all from Japan. And, um, you know, my predictions some some of these predictions, you know, who knows where we're going to, if any of them are going to come true. I do, I can tell you this. Last year, when the Giants, when the Giants, the Dodgers signed, we wish the Giants had signed Shohei, but when the Dodgers signed Shohei, I said on this very show, if you followed NorCal Sports Network, that Shohei would hit 55 home runs. That was my prediction because I knew he wasn't going to pitch. And I knew the Dodger record for home runs, I believe, was 49 by Sean Green. No one had ever hit 50. So I said, I think Otani hits 55. I was just one short. But, um, you know, this is, again, we're, we're making some best guesses on these guys. So, But I think Roki Sasaki signs with the Dodgers. The Dodgers are looking to win and win big. They are not. They have a window. I mean, you don't always get a Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, and Mookie Betts. So why would you just rest on that when you know other teams are looking to improve, like the Mets, the Phillies, the Braves, the Padres? All these teams are looking to improve. And there's some up-and-coming other teams, too, like the Arizona Diamondbacks are out there. Um, you know, any team can, can get hot. And we, we saw that two years ago when the Diamondbacks upset teams and went all the way to the World Series as the third wild card with 84 wins. So it can happen. I think the Dodgers want to get to the point where they're almost bulletproof because there's going to be injuries. There's going to be a lot of injuries. And last year, the Dodgers pitching staff was really decimated by injuries. And I think they may try and sign enough pitchers to go with a six-man rotation this year because Sasaki and Yamamoto and Otani are not going to want to pitch every fifth day. So what do the Dodgers need? They need pitching. And who wants to pitch and play for the L.A. Dodgers who grew up a Dodgers fan? The next signee for the L.A. Dodgers, and that is Max Freed. I think the Dodgers get Max Freed because they would love to have him, and I think they know Lash as last year. They lost so many pitchers. They lost Gonsolin. They lost Glasnow. They lost Kershaw. They lost Dustin May and uh, others. And they lost Yamamoto. They had five, six pitchers out on IR for much of the season. So you can't, you can never have enough pitching. 
never have enough pitching. And so the Dodgers, I think, realize this. And Max Fried would love to be a Dodger. And so I think they get two of the top pitchers. And they can use then they can use some of their other younger guys to trade away for future assets or load up for what else they need. So I think the Dodgers are looking to, like I said, repeat, 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 repeat. I think they want to beat the New York Yankees 49 through 53 and become the greatest team ever in baseball. Who The Yankees won five straight. Look, the Dodgers want to keep winning and they need to stack up guys. The next guy they have, they need, what do they need? What's one of their weaknesses out in the field? Shortstop. So who do they go out and get? They get Willie Adamas as well. So the Dodgers have signed three guys now, Sasaki, Freed, and Willie Adamas. All right. Now, why do I think the Dodgers have a shot at the next guy, the cream of the crop of all of baseball, who everybody wants? And we all know who that is, the one and only Juan Soto. Do the Dodgers have a shot at getting Soto? Will the Dodgers sign Soto? I don't really have a great feel on this. I don't think any of us do. If anybody tells you they know exactly where he's going, they're lying because there's several teams that could get Juan Soto. It could be the Mets. It could be the Yankees. It could be the Dodgers. It could be the Red Sox. It could be the Phillies. Heck, it could be the San Francisco Giants. I doubt it, but you never know. We don't know what Soto's thinking. We don't know what some of these executives are thinking we don't know what the Giants knew. President of Baseball Ops, Buster Posey, and the management or the ownership is thinking they definitely need a star. Are they willing to pay seven fifty, eight hundred million to get a Juan Soto? And if they do offer seven hundred plus, and that's the highest bid, does Scott Boris not go back to? Steve Cohen and Hal Steinbrenner and tell them, hey, we've got an offer higher and we're, you know, we're going to take it if you don't, we don't hear back from you in 24 hours or whatever the, the, the timeline is that Boris does. So I think Steve Cohen goes crazy. It's, it's pennies to him. He's worth 20 something billion dollars, I think. I'd have to look it up, but 18, 20 billion something in that neighborhood, maybe even more now. So he's, you know, let's say it's 19, 18 to 20 billion. What is 800,000 to Steve Cohen or, or 800 million, excuse me, less than a billion dollars. If the guy's worth 18 to 20 billion, what is that worth to him? So I think the, the bidding goes way up and the question then becomes, how much does Juan Soto want to take and how much does he want to win? Because we really, we don't know what, what he's really thinking. So, um, you know, I'm just going to look up Steve Cohen's net worth. Oh, wow. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. Let me show this, this to you. Just Googled it right here. 21.3 billion. Steve Cohen, owner of the New York Mets. 20 is a little I was close. I thought it was 18 to 20. So he's 21.3 billion dollars. That's that's his net worth. So you know, the the Johnsons of San Francisco, they're worth like 5 billion, 4 or 5 billion. Um uh, Guggenheim. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Guggenheim owns the LA Dodgers, which is a huge conglomerate, which it's got several groups of people that are in on it. But Guggenheim's worth over $300 billion. Did you catch that? $300 billion. My side work, by the way, if you look up in the left corner there, secure money, that's what I do. I, I work in finances and I, uh, you know, help people in their financial area. And I work with Guggenheim. Guggenheim has loads of money, everybody. So, and they made money. They gave Shohei ok Otani $700 million and they made over a hundred plus million dollars 
off of Shohei last year. They're an international brand. So Juan Soto coming to the Dodgers would not shock me one bit because I just don't know how high they go. Now, Cone, I think there's a limit the Dodgers go. I don't know so much if there's a limit that Cohen goes. See, Cone knows that he's got to get Soto. If he lets if the Dodgers get Soto, what what's gonna happen? I mean, and here's the thing, guys. I'm not so sure if having a a a villain or a dynasty is so bad for sports because everybody wants to knock off the big guy. Remember UConn women's basketball? They had four championships in a row. They won like 129 games, 112, something like that. They won some ridiculous amount of games in a row, and nobody could top them. And what happened? Other schools got more aggressive. They started going after the top stars. Um, everybody wants to knock off Goliath. UCLA in the 60s and 70s. Everybody wanted to knock off, you know, when it was Lou Alcindor who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and then Bill Walton. And UCLA won like nine, ten titles in a row. And then, you know, the Golden State Warriors winning back-to-back uh, -back with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and they would have won three in a row had KD not got hurt and Clay Thompson. And everybody was trying to catch up with the Warriors. Now look what's happened. Other teams have caught up. So I don't think having a a a team that's so much better on paper and is a bad thing for any sport because it pushes other people to be better. So I could see the Dodgers landing Juan Soto in this situation. Juan Soto looks at all the teams and he says, what's the track record? Believe me. Him and Boris are interviewing. They want to look at the minor league system. They want to look at the commitment to winning. They're going to meet with these owners. And who better that what team can say we're committed to winning and look what we've done? They put the money out. They went out and got guys. And the other thing is, guys, Juan Soto playing for the Dodgers. Some people say, well, Juan Soto has to be the guy, right? He wants to be the guy. In San Francisco, he could be the man because. There's no one else. Do you think Juan Soto wants to go up to bat and get walked half the time or get pitched around because they don't have anybody behind him? Well, what about if he goes to the Dodgers and he's stacked in between Shohei, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and himself, and Will Smith, and maybe Teoscar Hernandez? So Soto doesn't have to be that guy. He could just go play ball have fun, doesn't have all the pressure on him, he can just play. And maybe that's where he ends up. I'm going to take a wild stab at this, guys, and say, you know, I've been on record saying he's going to go to the Mets. And, But I'm just going to throw out Dodgers. So let's just say Juan Soto goes to the L.A. Dodgers, and they now have added – Sasaki, Freed, Adamas, and Soto. And the last guy, what happens if they keep this guy? Where's there going to be a weakness in that lineup? And the Dodgers could do it. And why not? Why wouldn't you do this if you can? Because you got to bulletproof your team. You got to, you know, there's no cap. And the Dodgers are becoming an international brand. They're growing fans left and right. So, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is a wild shot, probably crazy. Maybe they get one of these guys, maybe out of these five, they only land one. And if it's only one, it's probably Sasaki or Freed. I don't know where this is things going to go, but for the sake of, Creating some uh, some excitement around baseball. Some, uh, you know, let's say they get all five of these guys. Probably not going to happen. Odds are, but it would be interesting. 
And I think they can do it. It's a matter if they want to do it. And maybe Juan Soto, when it comes down to it, we've, all we've heard is money, money, money. Juan Soto just wants the highest bidder. If he's going to get a dollar more, he'll go play for the Sacramento A's. Well, we know that's not going to happen. And he's not going to go play for the Tampa Bay Rays for a dollar more. Um, you know, and I don't think he's going to go to Toronto. That's a possibility. But why would he go to Toronto when Toronto hasn't even signed um, – Vladdy Guerrero to a long-term deal yet. He could walk this year. I mean, that's got to be one of the things. Look, hey, what's your commitment to getting Vladdy signed? If I'm going to play for Toronto. I want to see what's your plan. You know, the Red Sox have a good shot at him because they have players that they're developing. They've got four of the top 25 players in the top 100. And, and, and all four of these guys are AAA or above. They're ready to contribute in the major leagues. So the Red Sox could be a good team going forward and they've got youth. Maybe Juan Soto wants to get involved with that and um, stay in the American league East. So we'll see guys have, this will be fun. Tell me below what you think of the comments uh, comment in the section below. Tell me, Hey, look, I'm crazy. I, you know what? I may be, you know, uh, I have no clue again where these guys are going to sign. These are just some, I'm just telling you how I think the Dodgers are thinking and how maybe Juan Soto is thinking. And I definitely think Willie Adamas is a guy that is, he's either, Willie Adamas, I think, ends up with the Dodgers or the Giants. Okay. And any of these other guys that end up with the Giants, uh, I don't think so. I don't think. It may be a max free if they lose Blake Snell. But um, what I'm hearing, maybe Blake Snell does come back to the Giants or goes back east. So we'll see, guys. But L.A. Dodgers, they're going to land one of these five, if not three or four. I, I, I can see this happening. I see the Dodgers shoring up these weaknesses. As I mentioned, the pitching, they got – derailed last year and still won it all. They basically won the World Series with three starting pitchers. That's not going they're not going to let that happen next year and they're not going to rely on some of these guys coming back from injuries like Kershaw and May. You you can't really count on them. You don't know. I mean, May's had two Tommy Johns, so um I think they go after pitching, a couple of top pitchers as we mentioned here and um of those three hitters, Adamas, Hernandez, Soto, I think they're going to get at least one, at least one of those three hitters. They've already got Hernandez, but he's a free agent. So Adamas, Hernandez, Soto, they're getting one of those three, and they could get them all. All right, guys, we really appreciate you watching NorCal Sports Network. Keep it here. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that like and subscribe button because we do, uh, you know, grow when you put the likes on these videos. It helps us get more, uh, sub you know, the algorithm and everything. So we would appreciate you hitting that like and subscribe and check out our lives. We come, we go live here just about every night at about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, talking baseball. We're also covering NBA basketball, NFL. But uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Again, let us know your comments below. We will try to respond to as many of those as possible. Thanks again.